that's an athlete who is going through an injury, specifically bone fracture, do you ever think what you should be eating to expedite your healing process? The healing process usually take, takes between six to eight weeks. And 10% of all apparently uh, athletes' injuries are fractures, which can repeat if are not healed effectively. There are things to do, of course, like hyperbaric chamber, the medical one, that can expedite your healing process and take the period of six to eight weeks to shorter, even I've seen it, three to five weeks. Uh, however, nutritionally, there are key things that need to be done to expedite the process as well. I know as a professional athlete, maybe you have an attention of a registered dietitian who you believe knows all of the things to do of different phases to take you through to heal uh, quicker. However, we've seen it even on the highest level, um, medical registered dietitians, functional medicine doctors, not everyone has an access to the data and not everyone is doing the research. So today, Resenkas always want to help you live healthier life and of course per help you perform at the highest level recover at your best and today we're going to share with you essential information that needs to be addressed by you or your medical team your registered dietitian to help you heal faster it's important to know what bone is made of to replenish the nutrients but what nutrients need to be given at specific stages is equally important. And the three stages of healing process of bone healing, the inflammation resolution and uh, remodeling are going to be addressed right now by Dietrich, who've done an excellent job with me and another team player uh, during the last, I would say, a year to dive deeply into different layers of your body starting from your skin, the most superficial, and diving deep to the deepest layer, your bone. And today, that's what we want to share with you, how to heal from any cracks or a fully fractured bone so we can get back on the field to perform and keep on doing what you love. Dietrich, please take it over. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for having me here. I think this is a vitally important topic that doesn't get discussed. I mean, you mentioned the number of healthcare professionals that are not aware of these. And that's certainly been reflected in my experience talking with um, PTs, doctors, chiropractors, dietitians, coaches, nurses. I mean, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. So few people get an education on uh, nutrition, let alone the specific needs when it comes to nutrition for healing from injuries. So today we'll talk specifically about using nutrition to heal from uh, bone injuries. And we want to discuss how you can eat, how you can supplement in order to support, as well as the ways that are going to detract from your healing. When we're talking about, you know, our athlete population and people who are just trying to live their best life, settling for a average bone uh, recovery is just not enough. You know, we want to optimize this process. We want to accelerate it so that our people can get back on the field faster. We want to um, respect the whole process in order to uh, ensure that this doesn't happen again, to ensure that the bone not only heals back as strong, but it is possible indeed to heal back stronger from a bone fracture. So we want to cover a lot of the higher level, top level kind of um, interventions that you can consider, the things that you've got to take into account when it comes to recovering, when it comes to repairing bone stages. And we definitely want to cover what to do as well as what not to do, because there's so many things that um, aren't quite obvious that could be uh, delaying your healing time and just slowing you down. So um, absolutely. to take the big picture perspective here right off the bat, there we and many researchers, clinicians uh, divide the stages of healing for any injury into inflammation, resolution, and remodeling. This is the natural arc of the healing process. It, your body has to go through each of these stages in order to proceed to the next in order to heal completely. So what I'm saying here is if you 
blunt the inflammation response at the beginning, that necessary key component, then you're going to end up delaying the re resolution process and you're going to impair the remodeling process. So let's dive into what these different terms mean, what it, what's relevant for an athlete uh, or somebody who's you know, trying to be physically active here. Um, one analogy that I like to use is that of rebuilding a house. If you've got a damaged house, you can't just uh, you know, slap some new drywall on and, and call it good. There's a process you have to go through. In order to repair a damaged house, first you've got to clear out the damaged pieces, right? That's the inflammation response. The second step, resolution. This is uh, equivalent to building a scaffold in order to set the, um, the, the more inherent structures of the house back up. So you can't um, you, you have to have players involved that can direct nutrients and put them where they need to go when it comes to a bone healing. And then this final stage, remodeling, the vocabulary remains the same, whether you're talking about bone healing or repairing a house. Um, once you've got that scaffold up, once you've removed all of the damaged material, only then can you start putting down new floorboards, new walls, um, new decorations and things like that. And just as with your bones, the inflammation and the resolution has to happen before the remodeling happens where the nutrients are really packed into the bone. And, and this is the stage where you get back that, uh, the strength of the bone that you had beforehand. So adding a little bit more resolution here, I'm gonna dive into each specific stage. We'll cover um, you know, what they look like, how long they last, and what to do and what not to do. Um, for people who want to learn a lot more, they're not just satisfied with, you know, the number one thing. We've got a course on, you know, looking at the clinical research for using nutrition to heal from um, connective tissue injuries. And the class on the heart skeleton is immensely relevant here. We dive into not just the top high level things, but every single nutrient that you need along with the studies to back up the dosages that uh, you or your healthcare professional might consider in order to facilitate that healing process. So stage one, inflammation. This is when your immune cells have to get into that break and start tearing down the broken tissue. They also get in there and, and form blood clots, which help to halt any further damage. This is a incredibly important step in the process. And so, um, many of the other processes in your body are put on pause due to this inflammation. You know, this is not the time for your body to be, um, you know, repairing, doing you know, small repairs on, you know, ancillary tissues. All of the focus is on healing that individual bone. And so the duration of this ranges from one day for, you know, a small hairline fracture to five days for a really large bone break that needs um, a lot of support uh, in order to commence this healing process. So, you know, if this is a necessary inflammatory stage, the worst thing that you can do in the first step is using high dose antioxidants and excessive use of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Um, you know, ev everybody needs to assess their own pain tolerance um, according to themselves. Um, you know, breaking bones is an incredibly painful experience, but what the research has suggested and is continuing to be confirmed every time I see a new study come out, it's that using really high dose vitamin C, really high dose vitamin E, and I'm talking about, you know, thousands and thousands of milligrams, you know, hundreds of times or at least 10 times higher than the RDA or something like that. These actually blunt that inflammation response. And you know, from, um, from a casual perspective, you know, you hear inflammation, you don't want that. You know, inflammation means pain. Inflammation means swelling. Inflammation means all the things that prevent you from getting onto the field. But the question has to be asked at this stage, anybody should not be getting back on the field. They need to be respecting that natural healing process and supporting the inflammation that has to happen before the bone can um, resolve and remodel into something stronger. So 
um, we dive really deeply into the research and the evidence around this in our course. So I encourage people to check that out if they're interested. But I'll leave it at that. You know, high dose non serial anti-inflammatories are one of the worst things you can do in the initial stage. There are other painkillers that people can consider, and you know, sticking with the minimum dose that people can tolerate is um, an evidence-based recommendation. Now, the most important thing to do at this stage is, you know, this clearing out of tissues is by definition a catabolic process. We have anabolism, which is building up, and catabolism, which is breaking down. You know, if you've got all of these broken um, tissue fragments in a broken bone, those have to be cleared out before new tissues can be formed. So this catabolic process demands a lot of calories. It demands a lot of nutrients. And so um, the need for conditionally essential amino acids, those proteins that normally your body can make enough of just fine, but uh, in the state of a bone break, you, your body can't keep up with the demand. There's a bottleneck in the metabolism there, and you've got to be able to support those specific amino acids, those specific proteins nutritionally. I mean, the same goes for a lot of your other essential vitamins. The needs just skyrocket and people have to be eating a really nutrient dense diet. Um, and we cover the how to's in not only the course, but also uh, the Resync ebook on uh, nutrition and connective tissue health at every layer. So um, maybe we can dive in a little bit later into some of the, the recipes that might support the nutrient density necessary for the inflammation stage. Next, the resolution step. This is starts around day five and continues on through the first four weeks. There's this is, you know, in that analogy where your cells are building the scaffold that new bone tissue is going to be laid down onto. So this looks like a collagen callus. So something that uh, would be notable here is to know that bones are made primarily of collagen, and then they have mineral molecules put in there to harden them. So collagen, you know, you think of collagen, you think of your tendons, you think of your stretchy connective tissue, your bone is just the same. I mean, it's got to uh, have that collagen in order to um, have the resilience against an impact, against a future impact. So the health of this collagen callus is paramount for future, um, future remodeling efforts. If you were laying down the minerals and the nutrients that harden your bone, and you were putting them on top of a scaffold that was pretty sketchy, it, the scaffold is just not structurally sound, then you're setting yourself up for another break. So this critical period of week two to week four, making sure that your body has the nutrients to build an effective scaffold is critical. Um, collagen being one of the most important nutrients there. Now, what not to do? are the things that damage that scaffold. So what I'm speaking of here are excessive refined carbohydrates, excessive amounts of sugar. Yes, a practical relevant amount of carbohydrates are necessary to support that phase of healing, but going beyond that with, I mean, we all like the comfort foods, right? When we're sick, when we're injured, the, the ice cream, the, um, the desserts, the treats, the baked goods, I mean, these, um, I would say they fill us up emotionally, but honestly, it's just a uh, uh, kind of a band-aid solution for any sort of emotional support. But these are coping mechanisms that people use, and people don't realize that eating the sugar, having that dysregulated uh, metabolism, that elevated blood sugar, actually stiffens the collagen scaffold in a way that makes your bones more brittle. These are called advanced glycation end products. Um, terminology aside, you know, your bones have to be pliable. They contain water, they contain collagen. They need to be able to resist an impact. And if you've got excessive sugar in your blood veins, it's causing this collagen to stiffen, which ultimately sets you up for failure down the line. Critical, important, critically important feature to note there. So third stage, remodeling. This is when, as I discussed, that scaffold is being filled with the nutrients your bone uses to maintain its strength and maintain its integrity. This starts about 18 days into the process. And 
Um, in exceptional cases, can uh, be completed within you know, six weeks or less, you know, if you're using every single strategy at your disposal. Um, some people, though, uh, I mean, it, it's important to note that, um, you know, five to 10% of fractures result in non-union. They don't end up healing fully. So that's a huge problem. If you're, you've supported, you know, your healing, you did the doctor's orders, you put a cast on, you immobilized it, and six weeks later, you pull it off, you're ready to go. That's not enough because the remodeling takes additional nutrients, specific nutrients that help to make sure that bone heals stronger than it started out. One thing I like to point out, you know, when you are working out, you can build muscle in a matter of days. Like it's very clear that muscle tissue adapts and remodels quickly. Now, when it comes to connective tissues though, it can take 90 days just to start that remodeling process <laughs> due to outside exposures. And so um, this process is accelerated through this arc of healing, as long as each stage is respected, that remodeling process is gonna commence a lot sooner and a lot faster in this setting. But the comparison is just great to keep in mind that you, your muscle may feel fine. That's where your nerves are. That's where you feel the pain. And so you might feel fine and ready to go, but really pay attention to the signals that your body are giving you um, at the deeper level at the, because you know we don't have nerves in our bones. We don't have nerves in our cartilage and our collagen tissues. So, um, you know, they don't respond in the same painful way. And we have to be the smarter ones here. We have to uh, say, you know, no, I'm, I'm not going to be pushing myself too hard too soon because I need to respect this natural process and I need to make sure that the, uh, that the bone heals fully. So really important thing at that final stage through the three months, through the six months, through the six weeks, if it heals that fast, is to maintain high nutrient intake, um, especially with the essential building blocks the composition of those building blocks changes from the resolution stage to the remodeling stage. You now there's uh, more calcium, more phosphorus deposition in that final stage. Um, but also, you know, I, I don't say these things about avoiding um, getting back on the field too soon to say, you know, don't do the physical therapy, don't get physically active. I think you, Barbara, would know better than anyone getting that physical activity helps with the oxygenation. It helps with signaling the, um, signaling the tissues to uh, form in certain ways that support the structure and function of those tissues. So making sure to you know, do the right level of physical activity is critical through that remodeling phase. Um, what would you add there, Barbara? Yeah, speaking of you know, movement, uh, we know that uh, movement is the medicine, just like nutrition, right? we say uh, that movement actually hydrates our tissues on different level. It's essential for that. And you've mentioned how important water is. I mean, water in itself is 50%, bone is made 50% of the water, right? Uh, but I, I wanna be very specific when we say that drinking water is not good enough for hydration purposes, yes? I'm about to do a presentation in front of NBA. I'm super excited to do it because it's all about fascially integrated movement and nutrition where I'm going to specifically, you know, address fascia, but fascia is around bone, fascia is around cartilage, tendons, ligaments, skin. And part of the conversation will be exactly what movement can be done, what loading patterns to support the hydration within every layer of the body. The same is with a bone healing. At this stage, there is a lot of, you know, uh, uh, therapies done for bone healing from, like I said, initially hyperbaric chambers, right? To supply the oxygenation, which water in a way, as we talked in our class Dietrich, is the medium, right? Through which nutrients are diffused, just, just it helps the oxygenation as well, right? Um, and so one and second go hand in hand together, the water oxygenation over these tissues, like you said, don't have continuous blood supply uh, to keep them 
hydrating with the essential delivery of the nutrients where they need to go. So when it comes to hydration and movement, um, it's critical for bone healing at any stage of the three phases you addressed in mobilizing the joint. Of course, listen, depending on the fracture as well, right? Uh, depending, of course, how complicated it is. Uh, did it happen in several places and different joints or is it just local, small, right? Different application. Some water therapies would immediately apply besides hyperbaric chamber, the medical one, um, and the more frequent the chamber dives, the faster the healing. Like I shared initially, I was really uh, a, uh, able to hear many stories from colleagues of mine who supported uh, professional athletes with hyperbaric chamber healing. And he told me a story back in 2011, almost a decade ago, right? Um, how he helped an athlete get back on the horse, a polo player, within a three weeks after a bone fracture of his uh, lower leg. And that was fantastic. The coaching staff, the team couldn't believe it that the key player was back. Um, and that's what we are speaking here for an athlete, getting back on the field is super important. There's nothing more important to them to the time and being back stronger than before, not weaker. So, you know, skipping any of the stages is foolish. Staying true to each of the phases, respecting, as you said, the pain, it's very important because if you start masking it with the painkillers, you are just deteriorating the entire process. So I think this is the, uh, a, a huge opportunity for us to address what really matters. And of course, if somebody wants to deepen the knowledge, as we said, I believe it's at the, exactly at the 26th minute of our class where we address what specific nutrients, vitamins, the factors, cofactors um, go into each of the phases, the inflammation, the resolution, and the remodeling. So I absolutely invite you, if you're an athlete, if you're a parent of an athlete who's caring for them because they're still in a high school and about to go to college and want to play division, at, you know, uh, division one, uh, any uh, sport that's important to you to support them, that class will give you a clarity on what to make for them to help them recover faster. You don't need to be a registered dietitian or a medical, uh, I would say, a uh, medical professional to really benefit from it because even registered dietitians, we shared, may not really possess the knowledge that we address because we did take an extra time you know, a critical six months plus to do the research on different layers of the body. And thankfully to that, we did give the opportunity for registered dietitian to get a continuation of education, right? Uh, with your help, Dietrich, that was fantastic. So if a registered dietitian is working with any athletic population, with an athlete, even if it's, uh, you know, a collegiate or professional Olympic athlete, that information will be truly critical and you don't need to stop at the deepest layer the bone because we also covered cartilage we covered tendons ligaments fascia right we covered muscles and circulatory system together which is so essential and i was so happy about that as well so there is a lot of information also recipes that you and i have created i've made them <laughs> one by one <laughs> from all the you know what creative salmon tofu salads to different layers parfait that are quick to make and so delicious and address key minerals and vitamins and of course the protein collagen that you've mentioned the bone uh the 25 percent of the protein that the bone is made of 25 percent minerals and the 50 percent water but of the 25 percent 90 percent is collagen and we address that specifically in the recipe book uh, recover every layer of the body. And we really took our time to contribute to, to your knowledge and to your excellence. So if you really care, and if you don't want to spend the time, but you have one of your teammates, or it's a registered dietitian, coach, that you would like them to get educated, absolutely tell them about the class. It's a very easy to follow one hour class that will give you a 
depth of information to take care of the deepest layer of your body, your bone. And you can find that on uh, recentproducts.com, our website. You will also find, like I said, additional products if you are interested. Also supplements that I've created initially for professional athletes to help them recover better post any activity, not just, you know, gain practice after traveling time because oxygenation of the body is so important. Uh, addressing the exactly um, inflammation that can happen is so important, but respecting the inflammation and respecting all the stages that we address is so important as well. So there are a few products, check it out. There are all NSF sports certified, critical for professional athletes to make sure that gives them peace in mind, right? That it was tested for dense substances, so they don't have to worry about that. They can just focus on their performance, which is the key. And we are here to help you with that. So again, if you're interested, go and check it out. For now, heal if you are in pain. If you are not, do your best to take care of your nutrition, your movement, and your emotional balance to prevent injuries. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. For now, stay healthy. We are here to help you. If you have any questions, please ask we will make sure to address them as soon as we can.